Welcome friends and welcome to my series of video lectures on design of RCC structures. We are studying chapter 1 fundamentals of reinforced concrete. In this, this video lecture is RCC 1.3 IS 456 2000 and limit state method. For best video quality, Watch this video lecture on a laptop or desktop with resolution set to 1080p that is HD. The expected learning outcomes of this video lecture are 1. To describe structure and broad contents of IS 456-2000. Second, to explain concept of limit states. Three, to appreciate significance of partial safety factors. The contents of this video lecture are 1. Overview of IS 456-2000 2. Introduction to limit state method for RCC 3. Partial safety factors for materials and loads Friends, we are going to use some key terms in this video. They are limit states, serviceability, safety and stability, characteristic strength, characteristic loads, design strength, design loads, partial safety factors. Now we have our best friend Smarty here for some smart tips. Write down your own notes while watching the video. Pause or rewind the video whenever required. Do solve the formative and summative assessment quizzes in the video. Friends, in the first part of this video, we are going to have an overview of IS 456-2000. We know IS 456-2000 is the Indian standard code to be used for general construction and design in RCC. So this is the cover page. You can see the cover page of IS 456-2000. Now, the scope of the code. This standard, that means this IS 456-2000 deals with the general structural use of plain and reinforced concrete. The word general is important. Special requirements of structures such as shells, folded plates, arches, bridges, chimneys, blast resistant structures, hydraulic structures, liquid retaining structures and earthquake resistant structures covered in respective standards have not been covered in this standard. These standards shall be used in conjunction with this standard. That means for the special requirements of the structures which are included here, which are not common structures. Common structures are usually the building structures. But other structures which are mentioned here, for that separate Indian standard codes are actually available. But IS-456, this code is saying that you have to use those codes in conjunction with this code. Because this code is providing some basic requirements and basic standards for general purpose use of plain and reinforced concrete. Now we shall go to the brief overview of the entire code. So here we see the contents of the code in brief. So IS-456 is having five sections you can see. Now here we have got section 1. Section 1 is a general section and it contains scope, references, terminology and symbols. Section 2 is related to materials, workmanship, inspection and testing. IS-456 has given a good emphasis on the material properties and quality of material and quality control, inspection and testing because concrete we are using. IS code is not saying much about the quality parameters of steel because it is manufactured under controlled systems and under controlled environment. But for RCC, the concrete part requires rigorous inspection, testing, workmanship and 
quality standards. That's why this section 2 becomes important for RCC, particularly for concrete. So this uh, section 2 covers grades and properties of concrete and steel. Quality control for making and using of concrete. Inspection and testing of the structure as a whole. Then section 3. Section 3 describes general design consideration. General design consideration particularly for a building structure. So it contains basis of design. That means the various theories which you can use for design. Loads, stability and fire resistance. Second point is structural analysis. Slabs, beams, columns, etc. Third point is reinforcement detailing requirements and the requirements of expansion joints in case of concrete structures. So these are the general design considerations covered in section 3. Section 4 is devoted to special design requirements of structural members and systems. This section is not of much uh, importance for the general or normal building construction. But yes, we will see here they are of particular significance when we are having some special design requirements. So the section 4 covers concrete corbels, deep beams, ribbed, hollow block, voids, voided slab, flat slabs, walls, stairs and footings. So these are the items or these are the components of the structure which are having special design requirements. So they are covered in section 4 of IS 456-2000. Now section 5 which is of utmost importance for all of us is the limit state design. The structural design by limit state method. We are going to see the details of what is the meaning of limit state method in the subsequent slides. But here section 5 is going to be relevant particularly for us. Now this section is related to safety and serviceability limit states, characteristic and design values of materials and loads, limit states of collapse, flexion, compression, shear, torsion, limit state of serviceability, deflection and cracking. So these are the vital points covered in section 5. In addition to these five sections, IS 456-2000 is having annexures A to H. Eight annexures are there. Now, particular in, uh, attention should be drawn to annexure B, which covers limit state design or structural this I'm sorry, structural design by working stress method. The working stress method was the older method which was used. Uh, I, it is quite old actually. It is uh, it was used prior to 1978. But IS 2000-456-2000 still retains an annexure or an appendix to describe some of the elements of working stress method. We are not going to uh, be concerned about this annexure B. But it is worthwhile to note that the IS code is still retaining some a uh, part of the uh, history you can say. Now uh, as we have already said in the earlier video the Indian standard course once they are published they are further or subsequently revised and amended depending upon the research that goes on in the field. So there are amendments and revisions for this code also. Now we can see that amendments 1 to 4 are included in the revision 4. So if you have got the revision 4 of IS 456-2000 with you, it already incorporates amendments 1 to 4. But there has been one more amendment after revision 4, that is amendment 5, which was released in July 2019. So if we have uh, got the revision 4 of the IS code, 4 amendments are already included. But for the fifth amendment, we have to download this amendment separately and study it and use it while using IS 456-2000. So friends, in this way, this is a broad overview of uh, IS 456-2000. Uh, as already suggested, you should download the copy, PDF copy of IS 456-2000 and go through it thoroughly. 
Now in the second part of this video lecture, we are going to get introduced to limit state method of design for RCC structures as described in section 5 of IS 456-2000. Friends, the limit state method is the method which we are going to use for the purpose of design of buildings, RCC buildings. So it is very important to be thoroughly conversant with the clauses and the provisions and the theoretical concepts of the limit state method to study this subject thoroughly. We will begin with introduction to limit state method. Let us first of all consider a structure which we want to design. Now, whenever we want to design a structure, that structure has got some requirements from the design. If these are common but very fundamental requirements of a structure from the design which we are going to make. Now, what are these requirements? There are three requirements. The very first requirement is requirement of stability. The structure is expected to be stable. Now, what are the areas or what are the causes that can make the structure unstable? So, the structure has to stable against overturning sliding, probable variation in load, dead loads, moment connection and lateral swing. IS 456-2000 is mentioning these points uh, about overturning, sliding, probable variation in dead load, moment connection and lateral sway. These five aspects IS code is considering important from stability of the structure uh, uh, point of view. So this is the first requirement of a structure. If it has to be useful for us for the specific function, first of all, basically it has to be stable. So these are the five requirements of stability according to IS-456. Now the second requirement is safety against collapse. Assuming that the structure is stable, if the structure is stable, it will be positioned properly on the foundation where it is expected to be. So its location, its physical location will not be moved or deviated. But even if the structure is stable, that is not enough. A stable structure can be structurally dangerous if it is not safe. Just note this word stability and safety. Stability and safety, this is safety against collapse. Okay, so the second thing is once it is stable, its components and the configuration of components with respect to each other should also be safe. That means the beams and slabs should be themselves safe. Though the structure overall structure is stable, the individual components also should not know none of the components should collapse. So they should be free from the danger of collapse. So this is what comes under safety. So a stable structure should be a safe structure also. So it, there should be safety against collapse. Collapse means the mm, safety or the, the safety against collapse of one component or all the structure, entire structure also. Now the third is serviceability. Serviceability means functionality or functionality of the structure. So it means that serviceability or functionality of a structure means its ability to provide the service for which it is designed. So you may have a stable structure, you may have a structure safe against collapse, but if it is not serviceable, if it is not, if it is standing firm, it is safe, but it is not providing the service. For example, you have forgotten to provide door. What will happen? If the doors are, you have forgotten to provide the staircase, the structure is stable, safe, but it is not of any use. So, serviceability is the third requirement of the structure. But these requirements come in order, in proper order, sequence. Stability comes first, safety against collapse comes second, and serviceability comes third. But Unless all these three requirements are satisfied or fulfilled, we cannot have, we cannot call that the design of the design and construction of the structure is proper or complete. 
So we have to design a structure using what we call as limit state method to satisfy these basic three requirements. Uh, coincidentally, you can see that all of the three words start from S. So stability S, safety S and service reliability S. So there are three S's we can say. Now, how to design such a structure? What methodology should be used to design any structure to satisfy these requirements? This is a very big engineering uh, activity that depending upon the understanding of material behavior and available design theories in the country or world at a given time, various analysis and design methods emerge and prevail in practice. So if we look over a span of say 100 years, we will see various theories and various uh, understandings of material behavior had come and gone, had come and gone because the research and the uh, understanding of the material and structural behavior of the components is not uh, a matter of quick understanding. It requires a lot of time to go, a lot of experimentation to go and then we can come out with some useful theories and some useful understanding of the material behaviors. And that is why these IS codes also go on continuously updating and revising themselves. So depending upon the understanding of material behavior and available design theories in the country or world at a given time, various analysis and design methods emerge and prevail in practice. So depending upon whatever is present now in the uh, field of technology, in the field of RCC design, we are going to study what we call as the limit state method. So based on this statement which we said right now, there are three methods of design the IS-456 is recommending. IS-456 says IS-456-2000 in its clause 18.2 has recommended three methods of design. First is limit state method. This is section 5 of the code to be used normally. IS code is saying you should normally use limit state method for plain and reinforced concrete design. But second, it is providing second option also working stress method as we saw in the previous slide in annex B of the code. So this what is this working stress method we will not be describing or understanding the contents of the method in depth because it is no more used. But let us know the name and let us know that it was the older method and IS code is saying it is to be used only when limit state method LSM cannot be used. So if there are certain structures where the limit state method is not providing sufficient uh, provisions then you should design that structure by the older method which is working stress method. And that is why IS code has provided a brief uh, historical extract of uh, working stress method in annex B. And the third method, IS code is, has to be liberal in, this, in the sense that it cannot be strict like the Indian penal code. So it has to be liberal in the sense that should, it is always taking care of the fact that the research can go on and people can come out with different options also. So in order to accommodate that aspect, IS code is saying you can use design based on experimental basis also. So you are allowed to use your own method also, but subject to uh, satisfaction of the clauses given by the IS code IS456-2000. So method of design. So from all this, we can say that the best way to use is limit state method for design as the IS code is recommending it formally. So we are going to use limit state method of design. So now let us enter into the topic of limit state method. What is the limit state method? In simple words, IS code is saying limit state method is the method of design based on limit state concept. It uses the concept of limit state. So immediate question is what is the concept of limit state? So in the second part IS code is itself telling a limit state. A limit state is 
the acceptable limit for safety and serviceability requirements before failure occurs so whatever we saw right now these are the three requirements so is code is saying every requirement for every requirement there will be a limit of acceptability beyond that you cannot accept that particular design because these requirements will be violated so is code is saying that limit state is acceptable limit for safety and serviceability requirements before failure occurs so you have to do the aim of design is to achieve acceptable probabilities that the structure will not reach a limit state so you can say that a limit state is the uh, critical limit or the extreme limit beyond which the structure will become unsafe or unserviceable or unstable okay so that is the extreme limit so is code is saying the aim of your design is to achieve acceptable probability that means you should assure your design should assure acceptable probabilities that the structure will not reach a limit state this limit state should not be reached because it will mean that as soon as you reach the limit state you are likely to cross it also and in that case your structure is likely to fail or collapse now coming further the is code is giving detailed information about two basic limit states as code is talking about now two basic limit states first is code is calling it as limit state of collapse second it is calling as limit state of serviceability but there is a third uh, limit state also as is code has as i said right now that is code has to be liberal uh, in providing the things and it cannot be rigid so is code is allowing us a third limit state also so it is saying other limit states as needed as needed so if you are using a particular structure in a particular environment in that case the is 456 may not be providing any uh, provisions about design so in that case you have to have your own provisions for that uh, regarding safety stability and serviceability and you can treat that also as an extra limit state there is no harm in having any more limit states because that is going to lead to a better design but is code is basically stating two limit states limit state of collapse and limit state of serviceability the third other limit states are to be considered as needed or if needed as and when needed so starting from the basic requirements of structure of serviceability stability and safety we emerged with three methods of design and out of those three methods of design we are now concentrating on limit state design and we define limit state method and limit state aim of design and we are now come we have now come to the point that we have to study these two limit states in greater detail so is code is devoting lot of uh, space for this of explanation of these limit states so this takes us to basic limit states limit state of collapse and limit state of serviceability we have seen three requirements serviceability stability and safety i mean stability safety and serviceability in the proper order so is code is clubbing or combining stability and safety in limit state of collapse so the two limit states are covering the three requirements of the structure properly so limit state of collapse is related to stability and safety of the structure now when we will be actually designing the structure we will have to actually use the different criteria different numerical data different formulae different assumptions and provisions given by the is code under each of these limit states now limit state of collapse has got some sub limit states okay so these are limit state of collapse flexion limit state of collapse shear limit state of collapse compression limit state of collapse bond so we have got these four 
sub categories or categories under the limit state of collapse which takes care of safety and stability of the structure as a whole and the components now the second is limit state of serviceability as we have seen serviceability means the ability of the structure to provide service efficiently so there are two major categories in the limit state of serviceability owing to some drawbacks or some limitations of concrete as code is taking care of cracking of concrete and deflection of the members now these are according to the is these are the two main causes which can make a structure in serviceable so serviceability will be affected adversely if we have got excessive deflections of the members so the structure is stable and safe but if the members are deflecting that means the deflection is quite large then they will become inserviceable you they may not collapse the collapse will be okay but the service will not be properly provided so deflection is one important uh, category of limit state of serviceability second is cracking we know that concrete is a brittle material having poor tensile strength even though we are reinforcing concrete with steel bars that is to take care of the entire member and its safety but at various locations concrete will have still the micro cracks developed these micro cracks will not be of any danger as far as the stability and safety against collapse is concerned but they will that that micro cracking will certainly cause make the service inserviceable make the structure inserviceable uh, maybe for example in the form of leakage the concrete may leak if there are excessive vibrations then the the concrete lumps may topple down so cracking will make the service the structure inserviceable now is code is suggesting simple uh, rules for that to take care of deflection and cracking uh, rebar spacing the reinforcement spacing specifications are given so if you place the bars in proper positions and if you place the bars in proper quantity then the cracking will be automatically taken care of and secondly the deflection if you provide proper basic lbd ratio as recommended by is 456 2000 you can definitely take care of deflection so all these provisions in details are uh, considered in the subsequent uh, chapters or subsequent clauses of the is code so in brief we can say there are two basic limit states limit state of collapse which take care takes care of stability and safety of the structure these two major parts and the third uh, under this limit state of collapse come four sub categories in limit state of serviceability there are two sub categories deflection and cracking so with this we will move to the next part of the is code friends having studied the meaning and concept of limit state and limit state method and the two basic limit states we will move further for an important concept of partial safety factors for materials and loads this is as per the clause 36 page 67 of is 456 2000 now when we are starting the design of a structure along with uh, the application of limit state method as per is 456 2000 we have to make two basic basic anticipations there are two very basic things which we have to decide in our mind and then only we can go for the design so the performance of a structure and actual success of structural design depends and on anticipation of two basic values some basic data is required what is that a values of material strengths and b values of loads so these are we can say the two sides of a coin so if we are able to properly predict we cannot over predict or we cannot under predict we have to be precise or as realistic as possible in prediction of the values of material strengths and values of the loads 
about these two things we cannot be certain right from the beginning we know that the structure may be may is expected to sustain for about say 60 70 80 years so we should be able to anticipate the the loads which the users will be applying to the structure till its entire life so the values of loads should be correctly predicted at the same time values of material strengths also should be properly correctly predicted now the method of testing of the materials the amount of sampling that you do for material testing the workmanship quality all these things are related to material strengths so we have to be clear and we have to be uh, perfectly acceptable for the material strength as well as the values of loads now both of these anticipations involve uncertainties as far as i said right now there are some uncertainties because of the factors which we are which are not in our hand always so both of these anticipations involve uncertainties due to various reasons hence anticipated values of material strengths and loads cannot be considered reliable throughout the life of the structure suppose today while designing i assume some value i cannot say that this i, am, I cannot be 100% confident about that value of material strength as well as the value because i am not i have not constructed the structure i am sitting in the office and assuming the values and going ahead so the reliability of that assumption is going to play very important role and we cannot be 100% confident about the values which we are assuming that is why these uncertainties are to be accounted for properly so every design method says that as as is 456 is using here that you should use some basic terms related to that is 456 uses three basic terms in this regard this regard means in the regard of the uncertainties and prediction of material strength and the values of loads the three concepts are characteristic values of loads as well as material strengths second partial safety factors and third design values now we will understand these concepts one by one the first is characteristic strength of material now here you see a huge heap of concrete cubes we know that we test a concrete cube of 150 mm by 150 mm 150 mm size which is cured for 28 days and we test it for uh, axial compression in compression testing machine so that is how we test concrete now suppose you have tested 100 cubes and you will get 100 observations or 100 readings for the cube then out of those 100 values which value will you consider as strength of concrete there will be 100 different values you cannot get exactly same value in the testing as we know so which value will you take as the value of as characteristic strength representative strength of the material by characteristic we can say characteristic strength is the representative strength of the material so is 456 is given it's giving us a definition if you have got multiple testing values this characteristic strength of that particular concrete is defined as the strength of the material below which not more than 5% of test results are expected to fall after testing so in simple words if you have tested 100 cubes and you have got 100 values then the characteristic strength of that particular concrete should be considered as such a value above which 95% of the cube values will fall so that is the meaning so not more than 5% are expected to fall which means that 95% at least 95% of the samples must have strength more than this value so such a value is called as characteristic strength of material whether it is for concrete whether it is for steel for concrete we are calling this value or using the symbol fck fck 
just remember this symbol every now and then we are be using will be using these symbols in the formulae so we are calling fck as characteristic strength of concrete and fy as characteristic strength of steel here y stands for yield so if we take a small example uh, for the following 10 values of compressive strength suppose that 10 cubes were tested and these are the numerical values you got okay i have arranged these values in uh, ascending order from lowest value to the biggest value the values can be random in random order but if you can just uh, arrange them uh, like this it is easier to find out the uh, characteristic strength so out of these values what is the characteristic strength of this concrete so that strength will be as according to the definition here you have tested 10 cubes okay so it means that 5% of that 10 which is 5% of that is 0.5 that is half you cannot take half cube so you have to take round it off to 1 so only one cube should fall below that value out of the 10 you should choose such a value that only one cube on remaining all remaining nine cubes are having strength above that so if you look here the simple way of finding out that numerical value is just arrange the values in ascending order and you have to see the first value 16.4 and if any value which is greater than 16.4 for example 17 that will be all the other values nine values are greater than 17 and only one value is falling below 17 so 5% not more than 5% values are falling below 17 so you may say that uh, any value greater than 16.4 will be the uh, any value means between 16.4 and 17.5 next value that will become the uh, characteristic strength of the concrete of these 10 for these 10 values so like this we can understand the concept of uh, characteristic strength uh, by this small example now coming back to the next part which is characteristic load as we saw there are two uncertainties two sides of the coin but both are uncertainties so values of load we are not sure about the values of load material testing is in our hands we can have at least some reliability of the about the material strength but we all cannot have almost any reliability real, uh, reliability about the values of loads and it is very difficult to carry out any experimentation about calculation of the loads so is code has done all that effort for us so what is code is saying characteristic load capital f as code is using capital f as a symbol means that that value of load which has 95% probability of not being exceeded during the life of the structure so that is what i s code is calling as characteristic load so i x code is saying that you should be confident about the reliability of that value 95% so your confidence level i am speaking in general terms so as so that the things are easy to understand otherwise the language of is code is a, a very complex language for a normal reader so is code is saying 95% probability of not being exceeded during the life of structure that value of load should be taken as the characteristic load so characteristic load is this value so uh, again is code is further specifying that uh, the values given in is 875 are assumed as characteristic values of loads as given the is 456 2000 so you can rely on the is 875 values as it is as, as by assuming that they are the characteristic load values so this was the concept of characteristic values characteristic strengths and characteristic loads now we will proceed for the last part which is partial safety factor now as we have seen these characteristic values of the loads as well as the materials they cannot be used as they are readily for our design 
because of the uncertainties as we know these are the actual tested physically tested values but these values cannot be used as they are in the because of uh, the uncertainties we have so what we do is material strengths are increased by multiplying by a factor and we call that as partial safety factor for material the uncertainty is not 100% removed it is partially removed that's why i i square to keep is calling this factor of safety as partial safety factor so partial safety factor for material i square is calling it as gamma m is the factor by which characteristic strength f is divided that is reduced to get design strength so what i square is saying if you are saying that you are using m20 concrete i square is saying that 20 value should be the characteristic strength of that concrete but while designing you should not take that 20 as the strength of concrete for design purpose for design purpose you should reduce that value by a factor so so design strength for design purpose you will be taking the strength of concrete as not equal to fck characteristic strength but you will be taking fd the design strength what is that design strength design material strength fd is f the characteristic strength upon gamma m this gamma m is the factor by which Characteristic strength is divided or reduced to get design strength. So M20 will be divided by this gamma M. Now here I S code itself has given that for concrete take gamma M as 1.5 and for steel take gamma M as 1.15. You can see that there is a difference. For concrete I S I S code is providing a bigger factor of safety, whereas for steel it is providing a relatively smaller factor of safety may be because of the degree of uncertainty may be more for concrete and less for steel so whatever characteristic strength, strength you have got you have to divide that value and reduce that value to design value and you have to take this value as design strength so design material strength that was partial safety factor for material then partial safety factor for load we know that the other side of the coin is load about which also we are uncertain so even though is 875 is giving some values of dead loads live loads and wind loads and all that you don't take those values directly uh, for calculations of design you have to increase that value you have to make your design safer so assume that you are designing for a bigger load greater load so that your design will be safer so partial safety factor for load is the factor by which characteristic load f is multiplied increased to get the design strength so gamma m is in the denominator whereas gamma f is in the numerator okay gamma f is in the numerator you can very well understand the meaning of this so design load fd capital fd Uh, note that here I S code is making a difference of small f and capital F. You have to be alert while uh, doing the calculations about the symbols. So, design load F D is capital F, which is characteristic load value. You can see here capital F upon into gamma F. The values of gamma F, just as 1.5 and 1.15 for materials, values of gamma F. I S code is giving these values in table 18, page 68. There is a table, but when we will refer to that table, we will find that for normal dead loads and imposed loads, I S code is stating a factor of 1.5 gamma F. So we can say for normal purpose, we have to take gamma F equal to 1.5. What is gamma F? It is the partial safety factor for load. so while making our design calculations in the subsequent videos we will be making use of this data very frequently so in nutshell we can say that due to the two basic uncertainties the characteristic values of the materials and the loads are to be modified like this 
for materials fd is equal to f upon gamma m so for materials design values are given by this and a gamma m is 1.5 for concrete 1.15 for steel you have to remember this clearly that's why it's given in separate uh, box for loads you have to use gamma f or partial load factor the safety factor is 1.5 for dead load and imposed load so this was in brief the concept of partial safety factors for materials and loads as given by is 456 2000 friends now before going to the conclusion of the video let us have a quick formative evaluation test so uh, pause the video and write on a paper the answer of the following questions uh, we are going to have three questions first is define limit state and state basic limit states and their elements means their sub categories it's a remembering level question second is define characteristic strength and characteristic load so this is also a remembering level question the third question is describe the significance of partial safety factors what is their necessity and also state their values for material strengths and loads so this is an understanding level question so do attempt these questions thoroughly if you are not able to answer any part of it just go back and watch the video again and again so that you are thoroughly conversant with the things there so friends with that we come to the conclusion of this lecture let us sum up the title of the lecture was is 456 2000 and limit state method the expected learning outcomes from this video lecture were one to describe the structure and broad contents of is 456 2000 second to explain concept of limit states third to appreciate significance of partial safety factors the contents of this video lecture were one overview of is 456 2000 second introduction to limit state method for rcc third partial safety factors for materials and loads we use some key terms during this lecture limit states serviceability safety and stability characteristic strength characteristic loads design strength design loads partial safety factors if you just recollect the meanings and the things around this its key terms in your mind then you will be able to anchor the contents of the subject very clearly and easily in your mind contact your teacher in case of any doubts or queries and finally an a summative assessment quiz will be provided by me in the form of a google quiz the link of this google quiz will be available in the description section of the video on the youtube and you attempt that online summative quiz provided by me and try to score highest marks in it so here is smarty back with us saying thanks so thanks for watching this video and uh, let us say goodbye till we meet in the next video